Welcome back guys and girls. Well today we're bleeding some brakes on my old Nissan because the pedal was spongy and it just didn't stop sometimes like I thought it should. So I'm just going to show you how I've been doing this the last few years and uh, we are literally 20 feet from the street so as always traffic will probably increase because you know hey I'm trying to make a video anyway so as you can see I've got the wheel off got the vehicle up in the air uh, front tires are chalked everything's locked be safe about it uh, right there is your bleeder screw on this particular vehicle because it has four-wheel disc brakes when you loosen your bleeder screw always use a six-point socket very rarely will you find a six-point boxed end wrench but if you do you can use that but uh, don't use a 12-point you'll end up tearing them up and when you go to tighten this back down when you're finished they do not have to be super tight they just need to be snug and if you break one off those screws are hardened and you try to get an easy out in there you will most likely end up breaking it off not only is it not usable anymore but it ruins the core value you can't trade it in when you go to get your other one to replace it so anyway now I'm gonna show you how I've been bleeding these and uh, you know if you guys have a power bleeder or whatever you're probably not gonna be watching this video but uh, for those of you who can't afford that kind of stuff you know this is a, a real simple hack a way to do it um, if you can get a hold of what they call a one-man bleeder brake bleeder those are okay and uh, I've used them before but when you use those you know you generally have a hose comes down it's got a little check ball and a spring and um, you put it into a glass jar and as your fluid comes out it goes into the jar and the check ball locks back up when you let off the pedal keeping air from going back in and that's okay they work good but uh, you also have to make sure you are refilling your master cylinder with fluid because if you let it get too low you just introduced a bunch of air back into your system and you have to start all over not to mention you can't see it they call it a one-man brake bleeder but you can't see it as you're operating the brakes pedal to uh, see if there's any air coming out or see what the fluid looks like or anything so this is something I stumbled across a, a way to do it been doing it this way for years and what I am using is old or well this is in this case it's new nebulizer hose if if you or any of your family or friends have a nebulizer you know it comes with this hose and uh, you're supposed to replace this stuff every so often because you know you're breathing this stuff in and you don't want to have any yucky stuff that you're breathing in so there goes FedEx anyway so this is a consumable item it's supposed to be replaced every so often so uh, you get these especially if um, you know you're you're on Medicaid or or something like that uh, you get these replaced every you know on a regular basis um, two packages of this I actually got for free because the packages had gotten dirty as you can see it's dirty um, but once you take it out of the package it is perfect for bleeding brakes or uh, tell your friends hey when you, when yours gets old don't throw it out save it for me now one thing you do need to do, very simple. There's a taper on this and this little ball. If you put that on there and you start putting pressure to it, it tends to work back off. And it's not on there very far because of the bell in the end of it. It'll go on and then it'll pop back off. So what you do, remove that first quarter inch. Just snip it off, cut it with your knife, whatever. As you can see, I've already done that on this one. Just cut it off. 
that gets rid of all that bell and then you can slide this right up on there now obviously I've been using this it's full of fluid I just stuck an old Phillips screwdriver in there to keep it from leaking out and getting air everywhere and now I'm gonna put it on this screw like so now I've already loosened this bleeder screw or I can turn it by hand I'm gonna open it about a quarter of a turn. Make sure that your hose is up on there. And then bear with me while I go around to the other side. Now, as you can see here, this nebulizer line is plenty long enough. It's run under the vehicle, up over the door. into the top of the master cylinder. Now, when you first start, you'll either have to keep an eye on your fluid level or just overfill it a little bit because you are uh, filling this line and that'll you know, bring your fluid level down. Now, you don't have to start the vehicle. Matter of fact, it's probably better that you don't. And as you are pushing your brake pedal, you can sit right here and you can watch for any air, any dirt. You can actually watch the fluid change colors if it's been a long time since you've uh, had this done. And if your fluid's looking nasty, then don't put it back in to your master cylinder you start seeing ugly fluid coming out or milky looking fluid then you want to you want to take that hose out of your master cylinder and discard that into a glass jar or something but when you do it this way not only can you sit here comfy in your seat you can there goes some air right there she just went by that little bubble right there okay now you said you can sit here comfy in your seat work this pedal and, and don't get stupid pushing this pedal. Just gradually push it because it actually takes quite a bit of force to push the fluid through this plastic line. And if you just stand on that pedal, you can possibly pop that hose off of your bleeder screw and then you're just pushing fluid out on the ground and when you let up on your pedal, you're actually sucking air back into your uh, brake caliper. So. You know, it only takes a few minutes. Don't rush it. And those back ones, they are the farthest from the master cylinder. So they take a little bit longer. But once you feel like you're confident that you have flushed all the fluid and air out and you're just recycling the fluid, then you can stop pumping, go back, tighten your screw up. Like I said, don't get stupid with tightness. Just snug her down. Put everything back together make sure you torque your lug nuts to manufacturers recommended torque do it in a star pattern i always retorque and uh, then don't forget you always need to check and recheck your lug nuts especially with aluminum wheels recommended interval is after the first 50 miles retorque your lug nuts and uh, that's basically it guys I'm gonna pump this thing about 10 more times, put her back together, and then it's lunchtime. So, thanks for watching.